Longtime Kramer fave GE is finally getting credit for its fabulous turnaround from a largely financial company that happened to make turbines, engines, locomotives, MRIs, back into a fast-growing industrial powerhouse with very little banking exposure, as management has already sold off $126 billion worth of assets from their GE capital business. In short, GE is transforming itself into a leaner, more focused, and easier-to-analyze company that may be able to buy back an immense amount of stock and offer an even larger dividend than the one that currently gives you a bountiful more than 3% yield. Tonight, we are very lucky to have the architect of this turn with us, Jeff Immelt, the chairman and CEO of G, and a man who used to be, I'm proud to say, my boss back in the days when NBC Universal was part of the GE family. Mr. Immelt, welcome to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. How you doing? It's so great to be with you. Same thing, Jeff. Really is. All right, Jeff, we got to start with the fact that your stock has been the best performing large capitalization industrial company in this market rallying more than 18% this year, a leader in the Dow Jones average. What do you attribute the outperformance to? Simplification, product portfolio, perhaps a change in culture to a more industrial internet company, a bit of all three? I think it's a bit of all three, Jim. Look, I think we've had a lot of things uh, come together this year. Uh, the dispositions of GE Capital have happened fast and, and uh, in a valuable way. I think the synchrony spin has been a terrific uh, value accumulator for investors. Our industrial businesses are growing organically uh, faster than their peers with higher margin growth. And I think people look at the company now, they can understand it better. And, and I would tell you, Jim, I've been doing this a long time. When I look at the next three years, you know, really the G team knows exactly what we have to do. We've got all the tools to do it with. And I think from a capital allocation, earnings growth, organic growth standpoint, we're a good bet for investors right now. Okay, I think people have to understand, because I love that you brought this up. Your organic growth, this is your big company, far exceeds most of the companies in your sector. Is that long-term decisions that are bearing fruit or just the fact that the portfolio fits the market and the times we are in? I, I'd make uh, uh, two comments, Jim. First of all, you have to invest to grow. And I think the long-term bets we've made on technology, uh, digitization, globalization, those are all paying off right now. And the second thing is, in a, in a slow growth and volatile world, having, uh, uh, being in a multi-business structure allows us to really be able to play through this in ways that more single-purpose companies can't. What? So while the oil and gas business may be tougher, the aviation business is booming, and you add all those up and you get a you get a uh, industrial organic growth in the mid single digits. That looks damn good in, in the environment we're in right now. So now, that's what I, it takes. I know that a trusted advisor of yours for a long time, Nelson Peltz, who runs Tryon, purchased $2.5 billion of GE stock and is very encouraging to you, has penned a white paper. And it's a lot about what we're talking about, except for it's entitled Transformation Underway, But Nobody Cares. Thinks your stock could go from 40 to 45, end of 2017. But he would say that the way to get there is to return 40% of the current market capitalization, which includes borrowing a lot of money. Good idea? So here's what I would say. Look, we have a lot of great investors. I think having a long-only investor like uh, Trying and Nelson in the stock is a good thing for all of our investors right now. And when you look at the future, I think the combination of organic growth, margin expansion, capital allocation that's more heavily weighted, towards buyback through both GE Capital and the potential to take on more leverage, those things are pretty attractive. It should give us top of class industrial EPS growth and really be able to distinguish ourselves from a margin and return standpoint at the same time. So look, we have a lot of good investors that I think see this as a good way to uh, 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 really achieve value creation for, uh, for our long-term holders. And I look, I, I think the management team is completely aligned with that as being uh, a good way for the company to go. But we, we, you know, Jim, look, right. all that being said, organically, we're still investing in R&D, capital expansion, all those other things. But I think with GE Capital, we've got the opportunity to buy back a lot of stock, keep the dividend uh, uh, really at, the, at uh, very attractive versus our peers, and still grow the company organically higher than our, our, our peer set. So, Organic growth, margin expansion, returning capital investors, that's a pretty good combo in the world we're in today. 
Now, and it's also once you are the final disposal to Wells Fargo, this designated, systematically important financial institution goes away. What will that mean for a new General Electric? Well, look, I mean, I think we're substantially an industrial company. That's what we're set up to be. More than 90 percent of our earnings are going to be uh, industrial. We no longer fit uh, the screen of what has been a systemically important financial institution. And it really allows us just to, to be what we are, a high-tech, best-in-class industrial company where we use financing as ways to uh, generate good returns and grow our industrial business. And I think from an investor standpoint, from a capital allocation standpoint, it allows investors just to see us uh, for what we are. We should be a, a high teens return, high margin industrial company. And I, I look, I think uh, it's all kind of falling into place. It's one thing to have a plan. I don't think investors necessarily want to invest in a plan. But when you see it being executed in a systematic way, that's why I think you see more uh, uh, smart investors that want to get in the stock. Well, yeah, I was thinking of you uh, as the world leaders convened in Paris over climate change. Uh, actually, my kids were asking me, Dad, what company is most in position to actually benefit? Because this is all they really care about, Jeff. We have kids. We know that's the future. And I said, i got to tell you, yeah. General GE is the company that is involved with trying to stop bad climate change. So, so, Jim, look, we've been working on this for a decade, a decade, long before it was cool. We were investing in clean energy, uh, uh, revenue growth and technologies. We have more than $25 billion of annual revenue that is really in clean tech, if you will, high efficiency engines, wind turbines, energy efficiency. So we are as well placed from a diversity and technical depth standpoint as anybody in the world to be able to participate as in this clean energy future. Now, the other thing I would say, Jim, is look, uh, as part of the Alstom acquisition, we, we, are, we, are, uh, we have a, uh, uh, an installed base that's coal, but customers are going to have to upgrade these plants to make them cleaner and, and more robust for the long term. So look, there's a lot of ways to play this, from energy efficiency to upgrades to new technology. We can play all three. We can play every dimension of this game, and we plan to do so. We've been doing it for a long time. Now, you did make some large bets in fossil fuels, including oil. Oil's come down big since then. Is it time to double down? Is it time to think that perhaps oil's a good investment? Or you just wait and say, look, it's part of the pastiche. You can't really hurt the company. So, Jim, what I would say is uh, the reason why we invested in oil and gas wasn't that we thought the price would be 140 or 100 or whatever it was. We could see the technical intensity of the industry growing. We thought the industry was largely undercompeted from a technology standpoint, and we still believe that today. So we think the long-term uh, uh, position that we've got in the oil and gas industry is going to bear fruit over the long term. You know, Jim, if, if I would have done this show 10 years ago, right after 9-11, people would be asking me about the aviation business, right? For the, for the five years from 2001 to 2006, the aviation business stunk in GE. Now it's amazing, right? So we have the ability to play through these cycles opportunistically in ways that pure play oil and gas companies really can't. So I think for the long term, I still believe in this business, but we really build our business around technical intensity, not trying to predict exactly what the price of oil was going to be. And I see this even more relevant with lower oil prices than I did when oil prices were $100 plus. Look, at $100, everybody looks smart. Where, we're gonna, where we are right now, you've got to really be able to compete to prosper, and that's where we think we'll be. You know, I've been thinking also the Alstom acquisition. Uh, when I go to Alstom's site and I go to, to what GE's saying about it, it looks to me that if you wanted to get out of coal, you would call Alstom. If you wanted to be able to build infrastructure that did not, use, that did not hurt the climate, you would call Alstom. This acquisition, what will it mean for actual earnings power, though, not just feel good? So, look, I mean, I think it's, it's hand and glove, right, in terms of what we know how to do. We've got a progression of earnings over the next, oh, let's say two, three, four, five years that get it up. You know, we're talking about five or six cents next year, more the year after, more the year after. So we've got to build into the plan. But what I would say, Jim, is, look, this is all about execution. And if the GE team executes the way I know we can, we're going to make a lot of money for investors as we look at Awesome going forward because it's complementary technology. It's everything we know how to do. And we feel great about uh, our ability to execute. This is 
100 percent in our control about execution. Those are the deals you want. You know, look, this was uh, four times EBITDA after right. synergies, right? So we ought to be able to make a good return for investors on a deal like this. All right. Well, I want to finish on something. There's a great ad you guys are running. A guy comes, a lot of smart people say, where are you working? You're working GE. This is about, obviously, the digital economy. And I just want everyone who's watching to understand where you've taken the company and how it is an internet industrial and what that actually means for earnings, for dividends, and for the future. So, Jim, this is maybe one of the most important thing that your investors can think about. There's a lot of buzzwords out there, the Internet of Things, industrial internet. Here's what I would tell you know, people watching your show. A locomotive today is a rolling data center. An aircraft engine is a flying data center. This is producing terabytes of data every day. This data can be used to give back to customers to drive fuel efficiency, better performance, better environmental performance. We can take the same technology and do it in our plants. So every investor of an industrial company ought to understand what their internet strategy is. For us, it's going to mean more productivity and faster growth. We've already been doing this for five years, so I think we have a leadership position. But Jim, I don't have to tell you, if you go back 15 years, trillions of dollars of wealth have been created in industrial internet stocks over the last 15 years. If you look out 10 or 15 years, there's going to be trillions of dollars of wealth created in the industrial internet, and we're just in the first inning. And I want GE to get its fair share of that. So maybe we think of ourselves, or people think of ourselves, as an old industrial company. Those days are over. We think this is a place we can play, and we're participating in multiple ways. So investors don't have to understand everything about it, but ask questions about it. But for us, higher margins, faster growth, participate from a value standpoint, the way that value was created on the consumer internet over the past 5, 10, 15 years, we think this is possible for GE. Well, I think you're right, and I think the fact that it's the best performing industrial in the world is certainly a testament to that. Jeff Immelt, Chairman and CEO of GE. Great to Jim, see you, thanks. sir. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. Yeah, Thank you. Look, good yield, strong balance sheet, great long-term view, terrific CEO. GE, my kind of stock. Mad Money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.